Holy cow. Look at the floor. It's coming to life. Flowing over Thunder's body. It's covering him completely. Here comes Monk Mayfair, the ape like chemist. Gracious! Ham Brooks, the sword wielding lawyer. Take that! Rennie Renwick, the two fisted engineer. Holy cow! Long Tom Roberts, the adventurous electrical genius. Pipe down, you guys. Johnny Littlejohn, the fighting archaeologist. I'll be super amalgamated. And their leader, the greatest adventure hero of the 1930s, the Man of Bronze, Doc Savage. The Variety Arts Radio Theater, by special arrangement with Condé Nast Publications, presents The Adventures of Doc Savage, a new series of radio adventures based on the novels by Lester Dent. Today, The Crawling Terror, Chapter 7 of the fantastic story, Fear Key. Doc Savage and his crew on the remote Caribbean island of Fear Key have been captured by the evil Santini and his Fountain of Youth gang. The gang has also apprehended old Dan Thunder, the man who claims to be 131 years old and holds the secret to the whereabouts of the fabulous substance Santini seeks, a substance wealthy men throughout the world are willing to pay $1 million each to obtain. Still, a mystery is the source of the fearful presence that instantly turns men into skeletons. Doc, his five aides, Pat Savage, and Kel Avery and her bodyguard, DeClima, sit securely bound in the underground caverns of Fear Key as Santini gloats over his captives. This is the joyful occasion for me. This is what I wait for. Not only do I have this fabulous Doc Savage a prisoner, so he will not interfere with my search for the weeds, but I also have the old Dan Thunder who can tell me where the weeds are. If he ever does. Oh, he will, senor. That I cannot guarantee you. Take the old man somewhere and make him answer our questions. And be sure not to go near that door with a secret lock. We do not want our friends here to turn into skeletons. At least, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> that don't sound good, Doc. Silence. Perhaps it is best to separate you so you do not spoil anything. Shot, leaky. Take a savage and the Avery girl to another tent and watch the bronze man closely. If he does anything the least suspicious, shoot him. You're right, boys. Sure hope Doc has some plan to get us out of this. I don't see what Doc can do. They searched him and he tied up with so much rope, he looks like a mummy. Losing faith in Doc? <sighs> Brother, he's the only hope we've got. Monkey, this guy weighs a ton. Pipe down, Shorty. Where are we taking these two? Just around the corner of that little cave. You see, a cave's only got one entrance. It'll be a good place to keep a watch on it. Okay, you guys can beat it. Shorty and me will watch these two. Don't we keep the lanterns on them? Nix. Santini says the bronze guy can hypnotize you with his eyes. Now, I ain't taking no chances. Point the lanterns past them. And then we'll keep watch over by the corner so he can't jump us. Them? I think so. There. Good. 
Let me kick them off. Your socks? The ends of them are missing. Yes. Straps around my instep keep them on while my toes are left uncovered in such emergencies as this. Now, get out of the way. I'm going to double over and try to untie the ropes. With your toes? Of course. <clears throat> I'd stop with everything else. You're a contortionist. Comes in handy sometimes. <clears throat> there. Now, quickly. I'll untie enough of your rope so you can get free. Then meet me down the corridor quietly. I've got to get those two men before they discover my trick. All right. Hey, Leaky. The whole thing here. Yeah. Hey, hey, boss. Where'd you go? I hope your head is still hard. Oh. Oh. Uh, Mr. Savage, what happened to them? They won't be out long. Come on, Miss Avery. Back to the main cavern. Are we going to rescue your men? Not yet. An attempt to free them would surely mean a fight. That would be noise and an alarm. First, I want to find Dan Thunder. Here's the main cave. Yes. Everyone's still here, including Pat and your bodyguard, the cleaner. And a number of Santini's men are watching them. They took Dan Thunder off that way. Yes. We can slip by without being seen. Quiet now. <laughs> Oh, that sounds like Mr. Thunder. It came from that direction. Let's take a look. My God! St. Pete's torturing him, tearing out his fingernails. That is all of the fingernails, Senora Thunder. Shall we try an eye next? No, not that. What do you want to know? I suppose you have no idea. Oh. All right, St. The weeds are in a secret storeroom. Just the other side of the wooden door. What? You mean that we have to take a chance with, with those... Oh, with my little friends, yes. <laughs> and I do hope you have an accident. How do we get into the storeroom? Can you walk on still? No, then I don't give a hoot how you How is the storeroom door open? There's a black lid in the rock. You jam your weight against that. Very well. Shall I get some of my men, and we shall try it. Watch him closely. I shall return in a moment. Mr. Savage, are you going to rescue Thunder? No, Miss Avery, he's safe for the moment, but I want to get to that storeroom before Santini does. Come on. Santini seemed nervous about going into the storeroom. Are you sure we should try it? We must. But whatever it is that turns men to skeletons must be in there. There is that possibility. We'll have to see that when we get there. Well, there's a bit of luck. What? There on the floor. Monk Snapper. He must have dropped it here when they were captured. How do you know it's Monk? His compact portable laboratory inside makes its shape very distinctive. It also furnishes us with the chemicals and apparatus we need. Need for what? No time for that now. The storeroom is just around the bend. Come on. Here we are. Now what? Wait. Let me listen at the door. No sound. Let me try the secret catch. It's dark as pitch in there. Monk has a flashlight in his knapsack. There's the black ledge. Something said to push against it. Yes, but he's rigged a lot of booby traps on this island. I want to find something to... Someone's coming. Quick, into that ditch in the wall. We won't be seen there. He came to it quite quickly. He's going to the Black Ledge. Yes. He obviously overheard Thunder talking, and he's decided to double-cross Santini. He's throwing his weight against the ledge. <laughs> oh, my God! He was cut in half! Stay here. Very clever. A razor-sharp cleaver, roughly fashioned from the iron part of a sailing ship... Rigged on a hardwood arm that flashes out of a compressor is placed on the stone. Oh. Come, Miss Avery. The secret to this mystery lies inside the storeroom. We must go on. Very well. Yes. Here it is. In all the earthenware jars lining these shelves. But what is it? I'll open some. Leaves. Dry and carefully packed. They almost look like tea. But not quite. 
What are you doing? Sprinkling a bit of a chemical from Monk's knapsack on the leaves. Someone's coming. Quick, back into that niche. Wait, the door is open. Someone has a brain here. What? What is this? <laughs> 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 Do you not recognize the decapitated form on the floor, my dear Shorty? It is a leaky. He's tried to pull the truth of the deal on us just like a damn Dundon. And now Leaky is a fall into one of Dundon's traps. <laughs> How beautiful! Is this it? Oh, let us see. See, this is it. At last, we have the material, and there is nothing here to make us all a rich man. Uh, oh, see, you're going to keep your promise, ain't you? Back on Long Island, you said we'd all get some of the weed when we found the storeroom. Remember? Uh, see, I said it. And the later, you, you can all... What well, sample the stuff? It's supposed to make a guy feel better right off, ain't it? It is. So, what's wrong with trying it now? Yeah. Very well. We shall try it at once. It must be mixed with water. We will take it back to the main cave and mix up a batch for all of us. What? Wow. The stuff that makes you live forever. The real fountain of youth. <laughs> How about loosening the up a little, eh? No chance. You didn't think he really would, did you, you missing link? Listen, you fashion plate. If I ever get out of here... Shut up, you two! We have found it! Buena! We shall all live forever, my men. And we will sell enough of this stuff to make us all millionaires! <laughs> <laughs> but come, we shall retire to Dan Condon's old living quarters and partake of our treasure! Come, all of you! I don't get this at all. Do you hear what they said? They're, they're the crazy dogs seem to think they found something that'll give them everlasting life. Wait a minute. I get it now. Fountain of Youth Incorporated. Remember the Fountain of Youth that Ponce de Leon hunted for? It was supposed to be somewhere in Florida. You got as crazy as they are. The Fountain of Youth could be on this key. Maybe long ago the reef was passable. Canoes came here. The Fountain of Youth might not have been a fountain at all, but that funny-looking weed Santini had. Maybe that plant does bring everlasting life. Nuts. Ham is imminently correct, Monk. Huh? Remember the wreckage we found that bore a pronounced resemblance to structural segments from an ancient Roman galley? Has that got something to do with this, John? It has emphatically. That wrecked galley was the clue that made me think of a legend from history which explains the presence of this weed that brings everlasting life, supposedly. I still say it's fool. Ever hear of C. Rene? Oh. C-I-R-E-N-E. Siren. Wasn't that a city that grew up about the time of old Egypt and Carthage? Indeed, man. Siren stood on a plateau. Its source of wealth was a fabulous medicinal herb known as silphy. Even the coins of Siren bore a design of the ruler watching the subjects weighing the remarkable plant. I remember. Legend gives the herb great powers, claiming it cured every ailment, wounds, even disease. Correct, Ham. Ships came from all over the world for the herb. And it became extremely high priced. Eventually, the Romans took over Cyrene and put an enormous tax on silk. The people of Cyrene were enraged and set about to destroy the herb to rid themselves of the high taxes. In time, Sophium became extinct. I don't believe it. It's in the history books, damn it. Men have searched for years for sprigs of the planet. Wait a minute. Only a year or two ago, there was a newspaper story about an Italian doctor who thought he'd discovered some Sophium again in Cyrenaica. Right. It's foolish to think that the people of ancient Cyrene would destroy so valuable a plant. So perhaps they loaded some on a galley and sent it off to an island or another part of the coast. And just suppose that galley got lost and eventually would wind up here on Fear Key. Sounds possible. Maybe, but still. Love him. Take him. Where are you taking the clean up? None of your business. Come on, you guys. Haul him out of here. Well... Looks like they're going to start knocking us off, one at a time. Poor Dex Don't worry too much about the cleanup. Stop! And 
Avery this evening. Why shouldn't we worry about the cream of huh? I was waiting for them to take him away, Mom. Quick, let me get you out of those ropes. You think you can take the cream away? How come? He's one of them. A creamer is working with Santini? How long have you known that? Since Santini was tipped so mysteriously that the airmail typist was coming to our office in New York, only the creamer had an opportunity to pass that information along. When the creamer came to me in Florida and offered his services as a bodyguard, Santini had sent him? Yes, Miss Avery. Uh, Doc, was I right about that silphium from C. Renee? You were, Johnny. I saw the weed, and it's definitely the highly medicinal species of silphium. Wait till I get that at the cleaver. I knew he was a phony all along. He was responsible for us getting caught. I found where Santini hid our weapons. Here are your super machine pistols. Some of the ammo drums were dud stock. I bet the cleaver was responsible for that, too. Undoubtedly. There's just one thing that ain't cleared up. What's turning men into skeletons on this island? That'll have to wait. You know what it is? Yes, but right now we've got to get out of here. And that means packing the cave where Santini and his men are. Let's hope they're quaffing their elixirs slowly. I don't think they are, Johnny. Here they come. They are loose. Shoot again. Head for cover. I couldn't find them. Santini just put them in the rest of our weapons. Hey, Paul, how about using those black balls on us? The cleaner says you can hold your breath till a gas loses its punch. Back the crap, though! Bring them to me! God damn the cleaner! If I could have one wish before I kick off, let me get that bird in my hand. Very much, I agree with you, Duck. I'm in favor of rushing them. Let's go out with fireworks. Wait, Benny, there may be a better way. Wait, you think there's another way out? No, Monk, we won't even waste time hunting for one. Then what? Just wait. Let's see what happens. Say, Paul! I don't feel so good. Senores, do you feel strange? I, uh, I don't know. But, dear, we... Come on. Out there? Doc, he'll get killed. I don't think so. Holy cow. They're out cold. I've seen lots of unexpected things. But this comes near to magic than anything else. What happened to them? It's the silphium tea they drank. Huh? Is it poison? Not that I know of, Monk, but I put a powerful narcotic from your chemical knapsack into some of the silphium containers. You drugged them? Indirectly, yes. Now, let's get out of here. We've still got to find the parts they took off our plane. Even if we don't find them, we could repair the fuel tanks in Santini's plane and ship the gas from our ship. I suppose Dan Thunder punctured Santini's tanks. Son, I forgot all about the old coat. What the game of hell? There's your answer. That explosion shook the whole line. It came from one of the entrances. Thunder was tied up the last I saw him. He must have gotten loose. He's tremendous at strong. A living example of how effective this fountain of youth is. Look, there! Thunder! I've got Santini's grenade. I close one of them, and I'll get the other one after I let my little friends loose. When I open up the place again, there won't be nothing left of you but bones. <laughs> Where's he heading for, Doc? There's a heavy wooden door that shuts off part of the tavern. Seems to be making for that. What's behind the door? The things that made that skeleton we found on the beach and turned colored into one like... That old man's dangerous. If we don't head him off, he'll assume us here and turn loose whatever's behind that door. There's the door ahead. Thunder's just opening it up. Blazes. He's on still. Yes, that would make sense. Look, he can't keep his balance running so fast. He's, he's falling off the stilts. Holy cow. Look at that floor. It's coming to life. Rising up and falling over Thunder's body like a brown blanket. But he can't get away from it. My God! It's eating away his flesh! It's turning into a skeleton! Can't we do something? It's too late to help him. We've got to save ourselves. Run! Which way? The entrance on the stone slab should still be open. Head for that. There it is! Everybody, up the ladder! Stop! What are you doing? I retrieved one of Santini's grenades. I'm going to steal off the entrance. What about you? I'll get out of time. Hurry! Hurry! Well, 
the gas tanks are repaired and the fuel's been transferred, we can leave any time we like. Aren't we going to try to dig Santini and his gang out? I suspect there's little left of them but bones, Pat. What was that thing that flowed over Dan Funding? Carnivorous pharmacodia. Use little words for once, will you, Johnny? Ants. Flesh-eating ants. Millions of them. Right, Doc? Yes. They're not unknown to science. They evidently used one part of the cavern for their colony. That's why Thunden shut it off with that door. Well, with them down there, we'll never get at them sophium weeds. That's not necessary, Monk. We still know where they grow here on the island. Yes, but they're no fountain of youth, as Santini believes. Huh? Sophium is a valuable medicinal herb. It's an amazingly effective antiseptic and tonic, and may even prevent disease. But it does not prolong life. But Dan Thunden was uh, 131 years old. I suspect his longevity was due to basically perfect health and the fact that, as an exile on this island, he was kept away from the distractions and dissipations of what we call civilization. So, Santini and his men were chasing a dream. Yes, Pat. A dream that has inspired men for centuries. But when we ultimately do find the secret to extending life, it will undoubtedly be the result of scientific knowledge and not the fountain of youth. And so, Doc Savage solves the riddle of the mysterious fear key and brings back to medical science the fabulous silphium weed. But even as Doc and his party wing their way back to civilization, half a world away, sinister forces are at work. And Doc Savage will soon find himself caught up in one of the most dangerous adventures of his career. Don't miss The Black Stick, the first chapter of The Thousand-Headed Man, next time on The Adventures of Doc Savage. <laughs> Key was written by Lester Dent and adapted for radio by Roger Rittner. Featured in the cast were Daniel Chodos, Robert Towers, Art Dutch, Bill Ratner, Jimmett Mustin, Scott McKenna, Robin Riker, Marcia Kramer, Michael McConaughey, William Irwin, Douglas Kohler, and Bob Farley. Also heard was Bob Watt. Sound effects were created by David Surtees, assisted by Jerry Williams. Production assistance by Samantha Kimmel and Doris Christie. Engineering by Denny King. Adventures of Doc Savage is produced and directed by Roger Ritter and is a presentation of the Variety Arts Radio Theater.